this year's WWDC conference? AI, 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 or should we say Apple intelligence? Apple was talking all about generative AI and how it's going to be possibly in your next iPhone, Mac, or iPad. Now I'm sitting here wearing, uh, or standing here, wearing Meta's AI glasses that have some generative AI, and I've been thinking about generative AI a lot over the past couple of years. What are we gonna expect in this preview that's coming in the fall? Here's how we break it down. First of all, it's not for all devices. If you have an iPhone 15 Pro, that's the only one that can currently use it. We can expect that the next iPhones are gonna get chips that are compatible. Also, you need an M1 to M4 series processor. That's the kind of pro-level iPads and iPad Airs and pretty much most modern Macs. And there are devices that it doesn't work on. No Apple Watch and no Apple Vision Pro. They may have to do with processor for the Apple Watch, but I find it's interesting that it's not on the Vision Pro, considering that Apple's Vision Pro is the vision of the future, right, in computing. There are a lot of ways that I think that AI could be on VR and AR headsets. Maybe Apple is not quite there yet. Apple intelligence is gonna work in a couple of key areas. It's going to be in Siri. Siri is going to be revamped, and even the UI has changed, where it's gonna be this glowing border, and the idea is it's meant to be, according to Craig Federighi, more of a system-wide assistant. You're gonna be able to pull up recent things that you've done, call up documents, call up and remind you of appointments, uh, the sort of stuff that maybe we've been hoping Siri would have been able to do for years now. The other thing is writing tools. Now, you may be used to writing tools with Copilot or with ChatGPT or Gemini. There's a lot of stuff out there. Apple's gonna be hooking this in across the system to help you draft emails, to check the style of something that you write. And it sounds pretty similar to stuff that I've seen, but I'm curious how well it works or how limited it is, and it's hard to tell that without actually using it. There's also gonna be a lot of photo hook-ins. That sounds really interesting because you may not be hooking your entire photo library into generative AI, but with this, you could pull up more specific memories. They show that you could almost have a recall of like specific questions or, or like a string of things that you might, you know, something that you did at the beach with food and a friend, and it might make a whole movie um, or a montage about that. There also is some generative AI um, image making. There are a couple of tools here that are gonna create, in a particular number of styles, images that will be based on requests, but also draw from photos in your library to kind of create a, a generative AI of a friend, possibly. This is a lot of the stuff you can also get online already from other sources, and it sounds like Apple's kind of getting its foot in the door. There's also Genmoji. It's their generative AI emoji. And you're gonna be able to generate all sorts of emoji on the fly. Uh, makes me think of what Google did. You know, it's, it sounds like a fun tool. I guess, again, we'll have to see what specifically it conjures up. And there will be other generative AI platforms that you can hook in here. The first one that Apple has announced is ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT will work for free, hooked into Siri or to writing tools on Mac, iOS, um, and iPad OS, and it will kind of work the same, although each time you do it, it looks like you're gonna have to sort of allow certain permissions in order to post, to make sure you're doing it safely. It's gonna be free, but they're also gonna support subscription-based, and Apple said that's to allow different models, plus that may address international um, interest because Apple's generative AI for now is a free preview for the US only when it launches in the fall and there's going to be a public beta of it sometime this summer to get to play around with. Apple's also open to exploring other generative AI models that will hook into it as well. Um, Craig Federighi invoked Gemini as a possibility down the road, but nothing formal was announced yet here. I mean, Sam Altman was actually in attendance at WWDC, so the OpenAI partnership was was the big one. Another big shift for Apple is in how the generative AI will be processed. Now, while a lot of specific tasks will be generated on device, Apple's going to be leaning on the cloud as well, just like a lot of generative AI services. But Apple's calling this a private cloud compute system, which is based on Apple Silicon, and they're promising a very secure private system. A lot of this data that they're gonna be using for this is your very personal data on your devices. And that's the sort of stuff that you may not wanna be sharing anywhere else. And Apple recognizes this, and it looks like some of the ways it's exploring this are gently beginning to step into that zone and figure out how that works. But having something out there that is part of an extension of your Apple device could be a beginning of a phase change in the way Apple thinks about its devices. Maybe we start having more cloud computing elements, and maybe that gets pushed into things like the Apple Watch as well down the road. 
So what do we think about this? I mean, what do I think? I think it's fascinating. I think it's about time that Apple got involved in generative AI. I'm curious how useful it'll be versus how annoying it'll be. Um, you know, how pushy, how much I want to ignore it, how much I'll find it indispensable. The only way to know that is to play around with it. And right now, a lot of people use AI and a lot of people don't use AI. So I'm curious, you know, how many people will have this on their device? How many people will find this helpful? And at least it's free. So. I am uh, super curious about it, and yeah, I do want it to be involved in things like cameras on wearables and VR headsets and stuff like that, but maybe in time. So if you have any questions below, let us know in the comments, and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.